Kia ora koutou katoa, and welcome to the inaugural Kohakon Awards. <laughs> so we can't have any, everyone here in person, of course, but we um, when we don't get a chance to have those chats where we thank people for their work or, I don't know, buy them a drink because they just were so awesome. And so what we decided is maybe we'll start a new tradition. Um, and so today we have some special awards. We're calling them Kohakon Special Awards. And um, we've chosen some very special people in the Koha community who have made a contribution that is, well, it's great. I won't give any examples because that's what the awards are for. <laughs> And so, without further rambling, I will describe the, I will um, start talking about the very first organisation that we wish to give an award to today. So, this award is given in recognition of one event in particular that is indicative of the impact of a much wider body of work that the organisers are committed to. These are those mystery awards where you just have to start working out what's going on. Um, the organisers arranged a variety of speakers from the organisations running the event, as well as representatives from the Koha community. They ran an online panel discussion and presentations about Koha in August this year, which were publicised and released with Creative Commons Attribution Licence, which is re reuse allowed. The, the organisers of this event are a university based in India, along with and in collaboration with their Library Information Science Professionals Association. They presented a webinar with the support of senior academics and professors from the Library and Information Science School in the wider university, and they warmly welcomed their online visitors and shared freely the learning ex a great learning experience about Koha. This event got over 10,000 views on YouTube and serves as a great reminder to us all that the reach of the Koha project is wide and various. Great things are being achieved all over the world and we are very grateful to those that share their resources and events freely, such as the power of open source. So, the award for outstanding effort to sharing knowledge about Koha with a global audience goes to... The North, the North Eastern Hill University of Shillong. <laughs> Later on, we will share the link to the webinar so you can see what that's all about. Um, what they organised was an international webinar on Koha Integrated Library Management System, which was organised by the Department of Library and Information Science in North Eastern Hill University, Shillong in association with the Library and Information Science Profession Professionals Association, ASAM. So, that is our very first award to tonight. For tonight, and congratulations, Northeastern Hill University, for that awesome achievement, and thank you for sharing it with all of us. Back to mystery. So... Excuse me. The second award tonight is for an elected release team member. And for these elected community member awards, I'm going to be passing over to Chris Corbeck to introduce what it is that made this person so special. So I'm going to pass you over to Chris. You're the one. Okay. I'll say. Okay. This is going to be super hard to keep mysterious um, because this person is so well known and does so much. Um, it's someone in the Northern Hemisphere who was a library, trained as a librarian, works for a library support company. So I've narrowed it down to about uh, 20 people so far. Um, they spend amazing amounts of time both during work hours and outside work hours looking at uh, code that people like myself and Alex and Alicia and Haley and Mason and who else is in this room? I think Ian's done a patch maybe. And Evan, have you done a patch? No, Evan hasn't, so, so no award for Evan. Um, looking at it, 
uh, finding all the issues with it and telling us incredibly nicely what is wrong with it. Um, so I think pretty much everyone in the community has probably figured out who I'm talking about now. Uh, and so I will let, or shall I know, say the name of the award or do you just? You can say okay. if you like. So the award for the longest tenure as an elected release team member goes to... Oh yeah, Catherine Fisher. <laughs> so Catherine, for anyone who doesn't know, Catherine Fisher is the QA manager and has been since the world began, it feels. Um, she's been there forever and uh, Catherine actually has been, I hope she's still watching, has took uh, time off work and has been staying up all night watching the live stream and sleeping during the day. Um, so that's dedication just to this one. Thank you, Chris. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. I just went to adjust them. <laughs> the next award goes to someone who is the Community Contributions Champion. His involvement in the Koha project has grown over the years from attending local Koha events to attending global Koha cons where he discovered the bug for Koha amongst new friends in new places. He has gone on to be someone that frequently replies to queries on the Koha mailing list, is active in the community IRC channel, is the chairperson for various community meetings as they happen and works hard to improve Koha documentation as a member of the community documentation team. On top of all that, he's learned how to sign off patches and has become a contributor to the Koha project code base. Yet he claims he's not a developer nor a librarian. Indeed, he does all of this in his own spare time. So if you have not already worked out who I'm talking about, I will now announce the recipient of the award for the greatest overall community contribution by a volunteer. And that person is David Lind. <laughs> This is one for you, Chris. So the next award goes to another member of the community whose contribution to the project is also great. I will hand over to Chris Cormack to introduce the recipient. Oh, yeah. So some of these awards, the first ones were kind of overall, um, well actually no, uh, kind of, these ones are moving more into uh, for this kind of calendar year to date. So we thought that we'd do some kind of uh, lifetime achievement type awards, but we'd also do some for each year so that you, there can be new awards each year, otherwise you just keep giving the same people, like Catherine winning every single year. Um, <laughs> so so um, these, this, these awards are kind of for the year of 2020. And so this person uh, is probably the, one of the few members of the, actually no, there's a few of us, but one of the, the group of about 10 people who like craft beer as much as I do. Um, so that might have narrowed it down a bit. Uh, he's originally from a country that is famous for its brewing, um, especially in monasteries. So that may have narrowed it down a little bit more. He is one of the few people in the community who is uh, paid full time to work on community projects. So there he is funded by uh, three amazing companies, um, PTVS Europe, Bywater and Biblibra, combined to pay him a salary to, well I've said him so I've narrowed it down even more, <laughs> pay them a salary to work entirely on Koha community stuff. So he doesn't have to do any client work or anything really that he doesn't want to, which is a fantastic job. Uh, I'm seeking patrons as well. Um, no. <laughs> um, 
So this award, I think we'll flick to it, and then uh, this award is going to the community uh, member who has contributed the greatest number of patches in 2020. So I think everyone can figure out who that's going to be. It is Jonathan Jubu. Um, Jonathan is the current release manager, but even when he isn't the release manager, he still pretty much churns out. He's a machine, really. I'm pretty sure he's part Android, powered by craft beer. But he, he is an amazing... Uh, he has done so much work, and he is always helpful and ready to give people a hand. Um, so congratulations, Jonathan. And yeah, come to New Zealand, and I'll buy you a beer. That's right. Yes, Stand by. Okay. Um, next up, in the same vein as the last award, we have Chris organising and organising, introducing another prolific community contributor. So I shall step aside and keep the clicker ready. <laughs> so this is another one, sadly, who can't be here. Um, I think they may have actually visited New Zealand before, if I remember rightly. Uh, one of the things that as, as, is as important, or I think probably more important than writing patches, is testing other people's patches. That's a a hard thing to do, and it's a harder thing to do nicely and give back constructive con criticism in a way that people want to make the changes. And um, this is someone who's done an amazing amount of that kind of thing over the uh, last year. So this is another one of those year awards. So it's for 2020, kind of from January 1st until about Wednesday when I ran the stats. So. If someone's passed them since Wednesday, um, my apologies. But as of, as of about then, I mean Wednesday last week, not, not, not today. I don't know what day it is. Um, it's cocktail day, that's what it is. Um, so this is a, yeah, another northern hemisphere uh, in, in a country that was in Europe and then decided it didn't want to be. Um, so that might have narrowed it down a bit more. Uh, and I think I'll just... I can't think of too much else. Oh, likes kayaking. That might have given away a bit more. And I think was a scout leader for a long period of time too. So that's probably enough mystery. If you haven't guessed now, or oh, well, the award, sorry, is for the community contributor with the greatest number of sign-offs, so the greatest number of testing um, in the calendar year so to date. And that goes to Martin Renvoire. <laughs> So, Martin works for PTFS Europe. Uh, you would have seen him briefly in the community video. You can go back and pause again. He's one of the people waving. Um, he is an extraordinary individual, as is pretty much everyone getting an award and everyone in the Koha community. Um, he has served as release manager, release maintainer, on the QA team, all sorts of things. Um, he is a passionate advocate for open source and for uh, doing things the right way and doing the best by the libraries that use their services. So it's a well-deserved award. Congratulations, Martin. Wow, it's amazing how much stuff Chris remembers after he gives the award. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, the next one. The next one is one of these more overarching ones. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be possible to... Oh, no, that's a clue. I'd better hand you over to Chris. Um, and he'll. this is, the. Um, I think, the last one that Chris is going to introduce. Um, and let's find out about this special person. So, yeah, th as Kath Catherine said, this is more one of those lifetime achievement awards. You know how they have those at the, at the music things and stuff? It's one of those ones. Um, so, let, what can we say? Another long-time member uh, of the community, one of the very earliest, so that's narrowed it down. Uh, someone who likes rugby as much as Alicia and I do. Uh, one of the few people I can talk to on IRC about rugby who, and part of the Kuha community who's not a New Zealander um, or uh, an Australian, so that's narrowed it down a bit more because there's another one there who I could talk to. Um, what else can I say? I'll try start giving it away. They, they run a Koha support company, uh, the longest continuous Koha support company now that, that 
that um, Katipu's not really in the game so much anymore. Uh, probably the earliest company founded purely on doing Koha. Uh, they've branched out and they do a bit more open source for libraries now. Um, they are one of the organisers of the amazing cheese spread in uh, Marseille, so you may have figured it out a bit more <laughs> now. And so that's probably enough hints. Um, so this award is going to the longest serving community member outside of the original um, five of us. Um, and that is... <gasps> nope. No. Oh, no. Oh. You did the wrong one. Oh. Oh. Well, Just they know. It. Okay, it's Paul. <laughs> Paul Poulan. Um, who doesn't work for the library we just put up. Um, so, and uh, what else? Yeah, so Paul and I, uh, Paul being in Marseille and liking rugby, that's quite different because Marseille is a massive football town. That's where I think, um, if I'm right, Zinedine Zidane used to play and stuff. Um, it's not a big rugby town, that's more Lyon. Um, but Paul and I have chatted about rugby. Uh, when we run out of Koha things, we can always talk about rugby. So that's good. Awesome. Now, <laughs> there's a little bit of a giveaway there, but I'm going to pretend that never happened and carry on with Glee. I remember this is really fun. I wish there was, like, giant checks and, like... <laughs> Massive, like, wheeling in a giant cake and someone jumped out and... Yeah, all of that. Um, but however, this next award um, is for an organisation rather than an individual. And they can't be here today, so they didn't just... Um, they didn't just get given away, although they might be watching online, and hello if you are. Um, I know they've been watching online throughout the week quite closely. So I'll tell you about this organisation. Um... This organisation has a library which is free to use and open to anyone living in New Zealand. They provide information on all aspects of intellectual disability, autism and other developmental disabilities built up over many years. They provide information to anyone at all in a variety of formats including books, DVDs, journal articles, CDs, kits, whatever it is that people and their families need. For families supporting children with disabilities, their introduction to um, working with those families is to give them a free book that is relevant to their needs. They curate and supply resources for teachers of children with special needs, and the list just goes on and on. I like to call them New Zealand's best little national library. This library began to use Koha in 2014, and we're all very proud to support them. So, without further ado, this award is for Outstanding Commitment to Free and Inclusive Library Practices, and it goes to AHC New Zealand. Um, they have a, um, they're a lovely library, their doors are always open, there's comfortable chairs, there's a beautiful view, um, and they are, they're a very committed team of librarians, but most of all just that they serve as a completely free and they are for anyone who needs them. And it seems there are very few organise few libraries out there with the, with I don't know what barriers to entry they have, without any barriers at all. Okay. I'm just gonna check that the what slide's coming next. What's funny about that? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Da, 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 da. The next award goes to an organisation, another, oh, another clue, which ha there's quite a few clues, it was all clues. This next award goes to an organisation which has had a lot to give back to the Koha community and has always done so freely. If you've been listening throughout the conference, I'm going to give this one away pretty early. So, in particular, with this award we want to acknowledge the contribution to educational materials that have been publicly published without the usual exchange of funds that most vendors would require from any user before they are willing to share, let alone making them available to anyone at all that isn't even their customer. Materials such as YouTube tutorials, koha documentation, 
podcasts, testing checklists, implementation plans have all been generously shared. This organisation started when two childhood friends were looking to start a new business and Koha came along and changed their lives. They began working for their first Koha customer in 2009 and now support over 1,500 libraries with their staff, their Koha staff, Koha team and their company of over 20 employees. It is the commitment of this organisation to allowing their staff in their day-to-day -day roles to share knowledge and education materials freely with the Koha community that we wanted to acknowledge today. Therefore, this award is for outstanding contribution to Koha education and documentation, and it goes to Bywater Solutions. Thank you so much to each and every one of you at Bywater who share what you know, give what you have, and to Nate and Brendan who've enabled that right from the start. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Checking. Right. We now have a group award, or a group of individuals all receiving a very special award. These people, again, it's very hard not to give this away, but um, there are a group of them, so you'll have to get them all. It's a bit like bingo. So these are the people who, without whom, many of us wouldn't have jobs. Um, many libraries in the world would have no automation whatsoever. Uh, there would be, you know, five companies left in the world supporting library products instead of 55 or more. Um, without the vision towards the future and their tenacity, their selflessness um, and their courage, none of this would be happening, not a bit of it. I don't know, maybe it would be happening different. It would have sprouted somewhere else and we all would have got behind a different cause and I probably wouldn't be working in libraries, but I don't know, I don't know what I would be doing if all of these people hadn't done what they did 20 years ago. So, we wanted to recognise the long-lasting impact of the contribution of these people to the Koha project and um, indeed that is what these awards are for. So, there are four people here perhaps there should have been five, maybe I'll print another one, um, who I'll name individually and then um, ask those of you who are present to pop up to the front. I think you probably all know who it is. I can't really build it up any better um, or without saying more. So the people we want to acknowledge for their long-lasting impact and contribution on the Koha project are Rosalie Blake. Rachel Hamilton Williams, Chris Cormack, <laughs> and later on, Joanne Ransom. So, that last one, I could have put some clues in to say that we also needed that person who was willing to, to, carry, to carry it forward, and many around the world did that, but Early on, um, a very important person into keeping things moving was was Joe. So, Joe and Chris are here today. So, I will just rummage behind me and then have something for you both. Thank you. This is so lovely. That little bit of interpretive dance by Chris was a bit distracting. 
It's, um, it's been a real career highlight being involved with Kohai, and while I'm not in libraries now, and I've somehow managed to con my way into this conference, it's been such a heartwarming um, three days for me, so thank you so much for this. Of course, the last person who um, perhaps they should have included is Simon, who was there right from the start too, and um, we all know that it takes a team, and Every little decision that's made on the way can change the course of history. So, um, I kind of think if you look at the, um, you know, you look at the, all the branches of Koha and all the releases, you know, that's what you see everywhere. Like all these little sprouts coming off, with all the um, different things that people contributed, and then them growing and carrying on. So, um, thank you to all the sprouts. <laughs> okay. We are coming up to our very, very last award now. Um, and I'll, I'll state what this award is at the start, and um, then I'll tell you about these very special people, and some of you will, will guess quite quickly, and others will listen to the end. So this award, and excuse me for one moment. Yep. This award is for is to present these two individuals with a Lifetime Community Membership Award. Um, so we could call them an organisation, we could call them a dynamic duo. They are one of those power couples where when you say one name you almost always mention the other one. They must know this. They formed a Koha support business in 2003 and became an ever-present ever-present presence in the koha community. They brought with them passionate support, strong business skills, and the knowledge and experience of decades of librarianship. They were active in open source communities, not only in the koha community, but by actively being involved in and supporting Linux Australia, and also by forming the Koha Oz user group. This power couple, or two strong and valued community members, retired from actively running their business, Calix Information Essentials, in March this year. So today, it is my great pleasure to present awards of lifetime community membership to Irma Burchill and Bob Burchill. <laughs> now, I know flicking back and forth between two slides is a little funny, but I originally had a certificate for Irma and Bob Burchill, and I thought, that's not fair. <laughs> so they have one each um, together. Yeah, they are a Koha super couple, and um, we stand here and acknowledge all of their contributions, their 17 years of active um, Koha support, and all their encouragement and their advocacy over the years uh, will never be forgotten and is very much appreciated. So that is our final award for the conference. Now, Lee Rowe is uh, making an approach to the podium and I will pass over to her briefly now. I just wanted to sneak into into proceedings and into the live stream to do an, um, another important acknowledgement, and that is um, to the Kohakon Organising Committee. Um, so, on behalf of all the uh, participants in the Kohakon Conference, and um, to uh, on behalf of all um, of the Koha community. Um, both in Wellington and online around the world and wherever you are. Um, I've, yeah, it's just you've done a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, actually, I might get you all to come down here before I just talk a little bit more. So um, we're acknowledging Alicia, Tosca, Alex, Hayley, Chris, Catherine and Rebecca, who's um, back at the Catalyst office um, doing all sorts of magic with the live stream, I think. Um, now, is this... A, will you be in the 
picture here? No. no. Oh, so um, if we're just going to get them to come in so that people can see you. <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, awesome. Um, this team has done such a brilliant job. Um, I, there's obviously been so much work um, gone into planning um, and hosting this conference. Um, it's probably been the most accessible, warm and friendly conference I've ever been to. Um, I've learned so much and my cup is runneth over and I'm sure um, every, I'm not alone in that. Um, so I just want to, um, so I'm just picking up a description that Chris made before of another award winner and that was that you're all extraordinary individuals um, but also um, on top of that your generosity and your sense of community so together you know as a group um, and part of the wider Kulha community um, and uh, yeah so ngā mihi ki a koutou um, and I've Oh, I've just got a little, um, some little gifts to give you. Awesome. 